Hello, I'm Antonio Moran. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief. Today's top stories in three minutes. It's Wednesday, June 20th at about 6.30 p.m. After days of saying only Congress could solve the crisis at the border, President Trump signed an executive order to keep families together. He probably didn't even need an executive order to get it done, but always aware of the optics, he reportedly wanted to look decisive. He insisted he wasn't backing down. But the executive order directly contradicts a series of statements he and other administration officials have been making over the past week. Trump still called for a hard line, keeping in place the zero tolerance policy of prosecuting everyone who crosses the border illegally, saying that's essential to ensure we have a, quote, powerful, very strong border. That means children will be detained along with their families while they await hearings, even if that takes more than the 20 days currently allowed. It's not clear how long it will take to reunite the families already separated. So, while the Trump move mostly diffuses the current family separation crisis, the influx of migrants is growing, as is the federal detention infrastructure, and that's costing a fortune. Enter Congress, which is scheduled to vote on broad immigration legislation tomorrow. Assuming Republicans can agree to a compromise bill, it would keep detained families together, fund border facilities, and address the issue of DREAMers. Some on the right consider that amnesty and are reluctant to vote for it, especially because there's no guarantee the Senate will pass the bill or that Trump will sign it. So they could go out on a limb politically for something their base wouldn't be happy with. Meanwhile, Democrats are just standing by and letting Republicans face the heat. Stay tuned. On the other side of the world, some positive signs out of North Korea. State media reported that Kim Jong-un discussed a new future, including denuclearization, during his two-day trip to China. Also, Hamas sent a rocket barrage into Israel, triggering airstrikes in response. To nobody's surprise, Palestinians are rejecting the Trump administration's plan to defuse the Gaza crisis, even though Jared Kushner is in the Middle East trying to sell it. Most world equity markets were up on Wednesday, despite the fact that the EU imposed, imposed retaliatory tariffs on more than $3 billion worth of U.S. goods, and the concerns over a broad trade war have not abated. The Nasdaq wasn't just up, it closed at an all-time high. Also, the mouse and the fox are back together again as Disney topped Comcast's bid for 21st Century Fox. Rupert Murdoch has made it clear he wants to merge with Disney and not with the cable folks. Now our alternate universes segment, the great divide between conservative and liberal media. The fact that many, if not most, news organizations have abandoned the traditional mandate to be objective, opting instead for advocacy journalism, is exacerbating pol polarization in the U.S. I honestly think that serious fair reporting on the suffering of children at the border would have forced the Trump administration to act faster. But outrage begets outrage and nothing gets done. Finally, you might want to get married because being single could kill you. That's according to a new study. You can find that, all those other stories, and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. And please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again tomorrow.